the beat coming at you with the funny random rambling talking about all the things that'll make that rain day sunny yeah it's hot and popping fireball dropping come get your laugh on yeah it's a concept you know he's rocking rock and the facts and all of the guys it don't matter where you are or who you with you gotta tune right in bring your girl into your girl to bring your friends be right be lit tune in in your crib in your way back to job he got new shows every sunday here we go what's up everybody this your boy b rob and i'm back with another edition of the Random Rambles with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a new listener, I'd like to thank you all so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody referred you to me, give them, um, I like to say, a crisp high five, although I do not know what that would be like. I know what a, I don't know, hand on hand action feel like. That sounds dirty as shit, but whatever. Um, I have a guest this evening, as do I do every week, or at least I hopefully uh, I will every week. Um, I come across him upon Twitter. No previous knowledge of him before this incident. I've seen him mention something that was um, that I've seen before. Uh, comic Palooza is um, a comic book convention here in Houston, Texas, that they hold every year. And he made a tweet, uh, something to the effect, I don't know a word per word, about him being there and doing the show. And I was interested because when I moved to Houston, I think, what, it's going on two years now. So Comic Palooza just passed just now. So the year before. So last year, um, I heard of Comic Palooza. I never knew of it pr- pr- prior to me moving to Houston. And then um, when I got here, I seen it and I seen that they accepted podcast at the time I wanted to submit my podcast so I can go to Comic Palooza and do whatever it is that podcasters do at Comic Palooza. But I found out about it too late and I couldn't reserve a spot. So, you know, that's what it was. This year came around. I knew I wasn't going to have time to do it or prep for it or anything like that. So I just let it fall by the wayside. But I reached out to this gentleman because... He was there. I want to know about Comic Palooza. I've never been there. I'm interested. And my guest this evening is Walker the Geek from Walker the Geek Podcast. Hey, what's going on out there? Yeah, I wish they can answer you back. We should do it live sometime, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I tell you, uh, you know, the whole podcasting thing at Comic Palooza, that's definitely one of the benefits of doing it there is you literally are live and out you're literally on the floor in the main area and just people walking by it's just random people stop by every so often say what's up so like you was like no shit like on the floor like as people walk by different booths and autograph signing areas and everything like that you like down there doing your podcast yeah yeah um they they actually give all the podcasters uh an hour of reserve time uh at the podcasters booth and it's right in the center of traffic and you're you get to go into the booth and just kind of do your do your podcast however you want to do it they don't really have any kind of set format um but i actually spent the entire weekend down there doing just random interviews just asking people all kinds of questions you know hey you know it's just first time at Comic Palooza, you know, and I actually met a lot of people who were there for the first time, and that was really, really cool. But now, what got you interested in um, participating in Comic Palooza, like bringing your podcast to that stage to, um, you know, promote? Um, no lie, as going as as press, I get to go for free all three ah, days, okay. so um, that's a perk, most definitely. Um, but as as a podcaster especially as a podcaster who does a lot with comic books uh it really kind of helped me come out of a kind of a social anxiety shell a little bit Mm -hmm. um as walker i kind of put on a persona and this gave me an opportunity to kind of go and i talked to a lot of people that i would never normally talk to 
Yeah, and I can understand that. Um, I got a guy that um, you know, I've got to know over my years of podcasting, and that's Sean Fuller of the Horribly Awkward Podcast. And um, this is something that he openly admits that he deals with on you know on a day to day basis. You know, the anxiety of interacting with people out in the wild. You know, and it's just like you said. I mean, it, it is kind of a persona because I mean. If you go back to the bonus episode I did for my birthday with my wife, Mrs. B-Rob just straight up said it on the air, you know, the way I am at home is different from how I am on the podcast. And I I agree with what you're saying because, I mean, this is a show when you get down to the bare bones of it. And, you know, you try to mm-hmm. present yourself as being entertaining and everything. And, you know, you, you kind of ramp yourself up a couple notches and whatnot. Oh, yeah, most definitely, especially for me. I'm a for the people who know me know that I'm a character and I love to cut up and I love to joke and things like that. And it for the people that have never met me before, it's you know, I'm I'm a little awkward, like I don't know you, uh, especially for me, because I (laughs) I admittedly I normally don't have a filter. Yeah. And so especially for me, when I meet somebody new, it's like, you know, how far can I go before this person's going to get offended and punch me in the face? <laughs> and, you know, and to be honest with you, um, when I got there Saturday morning, I got there early. So everybody was standing in line and I thought for sure, just walking up and down, talking to people that I was going to blurt out some kind of question that was going to cause somebody to get upset at me. And it never happened. So I was that, you know, that brought my anxiety down because I was super nervous about that. But it was it was really it was a really cool experience. And a lot of people were super, super nice, especially when you walk by and you've got a badge that says press on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, hey, this guy may know some or so probably get me into some shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what brought you to podcasting? I mean, you, you touched on some of your social anxiety and everything. Is that was starting a podcast a kind of a remedy for that? Um. No, uh, podcasting for me just really became, um, I, for years I'd been listening to podcasts and things like that. And, uh, I'd never really found, uh, a podcast other than a couple of comic book podcasts that I just felt were really entertaining. And, uh, the first podcast I found, uh, they don't do a podcast anymore, but comical podcast. And they were just two guys who sat around and talked about comic books for usually 30, 45 minutes. And, you know, they joked at each other and they, they were funny and it was an entertaining time. And another podcast I listened to, uh, the bri podcast, he, uh, he's actually a really good friend now. And he was kind of the reason I got into podcasting. He'd been doing podcasting for a while then and um he, he was doing it by himself and he the way he talked about comic books really spoke to me and it was like okay i really like the way he does his podcast and i really like what he does but like i really feel like there was something about it that not so much that i wanted to just throw my opinion out there and hopefully people agree but I wanted to make a show that was just a lot more straightforward yeah. than a lot of other podcasts mm-hmm. are. I'm, I'm, I go in and I, do, I don't really talk a whole lot about me personally and what I got going on in my life. Yeah. Uh, um, I hadn't listened to your show, like I said, prior to our encounter on Twitter. Um, I got to listen to a little bit of your latest episode today. It was, I, I think, is was post your comic palooza episodes so um yeah i mean you're right you was strictly talking about the comic books and you know some of the backstory and you know some of the issues and everything that were out at the current time or that you were reviewing so i mean yeah you if that's what you tuned in to look for that's what you would get yeah and for a while i was when i first started uh my shows were an hour plus um, because I reviewed comic books, but I was super in depth about them. I also did whatever TV shows I was watching, whatever movies I was watching. Um, and it, there was just this whole big, I made a whole big production about it and there was news and stuff. And I kind of 
sat there and I was like, oh my God, like I can't even stand listening to myself for an hour and a half. How can I expect somebody else to do it? <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> the show just kind of evolved down into, I try to keep it under 45 minutes if I can. Yeah. I just kind of let mine go where it goes. You know, if um, I've never really had a guest to be like, Hey, I got X amount of time. And we hit that hack and we kind of just blew past it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Because um, other than, um, I think it was maybe two or three episodes ago, that would have been, um, what episode was that? Making a Fend the Human. I had um, a musical artist, Sir John Lee, and a director of his music video, Deja Gordon. And she said, I have like 10 minutes. And, um, you know, me and John kicked it off. She came in. She did a 10 minutes. I got her to stay at least an extra three or four more. <laughs> but uh, she, she kind of stuck with to what she said she had. So, yeah, it, it happens sometimes. But usually once they get to talking, it is what it is. Yeah, and that's that was kind of my live show. Um, initially, the when the live show started, um, I kind of gave a small rundown of what was going on at Comic Blues and kind of my experience. And it was like, wow, I just wasted 10 minutes. Holy crap. And then luckily, um, Bri, Bri Fi, the comics guy came around the corner and he was like, Hey, and he sat down and he and I just kind of shot the shit for, I think another 20 or 30 minutes. So it was like, I sat there and I was going, okay, I've got this whole booth for an hour and I have nothing to talk about. That's super lame. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. Let's let's get on that. I mean, did you have a plan going in, or you just knew you was gonna be at Comic Palooza talking some shit? <laughs> um, initially, uh, my plan was to spend roughly about half of the day just kind of walking around, um, with my my mic and my recorder, and you know, just interviewing people, um, kind of getting a feel for you know what people we're getting out of comic palooza. Um, sadly enough, the majority of that audio turned to absolute crap and I couldn't for the life of me figure out why it yeah, was just, most of it was that. just unusable. But, uh, when I did my live show, um, I was going to bring a bunch of comic books and I was going to do, uh, you know, a thing, Hey, come and talk to me for a little bit and I will let you pick a comic book. And I think I had like 60 books to let just people choose from. And I get there Saturday morning and I didn't have the box. <laughs> so, uh, my entire plan went up and it was just, I was like, dang, <laughs> yeah, you pulled a dead pool. <laughs> I, you know, I did. I forgot. I did. I forgot the bag of weapons and I just, I sat there and I was like, well, I could keep going around and just talking to people. I sat there and I was like, but like, I've been doing that already. <laughs> <laughs> now, any of the other um, podcasts that were there to do their shows and anything, or were you uh, familiar with any of them, or did you know any of the hosts? Uh, some of them, uh, yeah. Uh, the guys from Cult Forty Five, uh, Nerd Rage was there, and the Nerdy Bitches were there, um, and the Bri Fi Podcast was there. Uh, the guys from uh, Mind Fudge Comedy Podcast, and uh, shameful plug if you guys are looking for a. 30 to 45 minute entertainment of three guys just picking on each other. Uh, look up mind fudge comedy. Uh, those guys are a laugh riot every week. <laughs> Word. And, uh, yeah, there, there were, I think there were 40 podcasts this year. And I knew probably six or eight of them going in. And I think I met like four or five more just kind of walking around the floor that's cool. I mean, and what is that experience like? I mean, I know you were there to do your your thing and, you know, you know, in partake in the festivities and everything, but I mean, primarily the mission was to podcast and to just be around other podcasters. What was that like? Um, you know, it's a great experience to network. Um, I had never actually met in person and uh, the girls from Nerdy Bitches. Um, so that, you know, that was a cool experience as I've been listening to them for a while and you know, they're, they're, they're a pair of really cool chicks and it's just like we hit it off and they're been not called them bitches. <laughs> I mean, it's in the it, title, you know, but they can only it, say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, 
Uh, I, I've never said it to their face. So, and they don't listen to my show. So if I were to call them bitches, but, but, it'd be okay. <laughs> but there you go. They don't even listen to mine either. So, I mean, I guess we're good. <laughs> uh, but you know, n- networking with other podcasters is, is a really cool thing. And for a lot of the time it was just kind of like, I would be walking and I'd be bumping into each other and I'd be like, Hey, Oh, you have a, Oh, you're, yeah, you're so-and-so from such and such. And it's like, and I, I had, I have t-shirts that uh, have my podcast logo on it. So when I walk around, people can be like, Hey, that's a podcaster. And so, yeah, people were like, Oh, you're Walker. Yeah. I've heard of you. And it's like, you've heard of me? Really? Like, Oh my gosh. Like I've been at this for a year. People have heard of me. <laughs> I guess, I mean, that's my thing. I kind of want that. And that. That's probably like, you know, if anybody talk about, you know, I do this podcast for me and this is my baby. You know, I don't need your Patreon money and all this other bullshit. I think that's like the only one thing that I think I secretly want is just like somebody to know who I am. Cause like if you go to my Instagram, I go to Walmart just about every day. I'm doing Instagram videos damn near every day (laughs) in Walmart all the time before we move to where we are now consistently for about two years I went into a Walmart every day every day closest to my house around town um the past year here in Houston I didn't I think I've been to 20 Walmarts within Houston and wow. um but the one where we finally moved here before we got to this house we in now I went to that Walmart every day consistently for damn near a year and not a one person know who I was in there and I go in there every fucking day and I see the same people and they don't know who the fuck I am <laughs> Yeah, that's and that's I, I, I worked at Walmart for five years out of high school. And yeah, I mean, you got to know I'm very good at remembering a face, remembering a name, putting that name to that face a lot of the time. Not so much. <laughs> you see, this is this was another thing, too. I had business cards, so I would walk around Walmart and I was secretly stashing them in items and clothes and <laughs> put them in the, uh, by the register, by the uh, gift cards. And I put them in birthday cards for when people go buy a birthday card for somebody, my car to be in there. <laughs> I would just stash That's, them everywhere. That is that is good marketing right there. That is good marketing. I need to get some more. I didn't ran out a whole box doing that shit. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, and, you know, go, going up to that podcasting booth, you, there's they have a table that's just full of nothing but cards that the podcasters throw out. And, yeah, every time I met somebody, they were like, you know, I, I, you know, do my thing, give my spiel. And they'd be like, here, you know, give a listen to the show. I might use, you know, what you said on the show. And so it was like, you know, hopefully people listen. And actually, my listenership for the last week, just a about tripled so yeah well that's always good <laughs> yeah hopefully they stick around that's the yeah, that's, that's the thing that's the tricky part i mean you, you always get those bumps from people that are going to chime in they'll get past the intro maybe hit the first topic then be, mm-hmm. hey i gotta go wash my hair or some shit <laughs> mm-hmm. but um see my thing always is is that when i listen to my podcasts i don't I don't always get the time to listen to them consistently every week. Sometimes they'll build up before I get time to listen to them. But I always listen to them while I'm at work because I work in a warehouse environment. And when I'm at the shop, I've got a a Bluetooth earpiece in and I'm listening to all of my podcasts. Yeah. So inevitably, by, you know, hopefully by the end of the day, if I don't have to go anywhere, it's, you know, I've gotten through all of my podcasts. So, but yeah, I. There's been a few times where I've listened to a podcast and been like, you know what? I can't do this today. Nope. <laughs> yeah, and and that's a struggle too cuz like before you were a podcaster, you were you were a podcast fan. So yep. you have your regular rotation of different podcasts that you would listen to. Some you may have been listening to for years, some a couple months and everything. And um I find in you know, I I kind of bounce this off of other podcasters. Do you find yourself listening to more podcasts now yourself being a podcaster than you did when you weren't a podcaster? Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I, you know, I would say it's probably about the same. Uh, I've dropped a lot of podcasts. 
Um, I actually three podcasts I used to listen to aren't around anymore. Um, but I did pick up some other ones. I, I like kind of like jumping around and trying to see like what other people are doing, you know, yeah. like it, especially if I find a podcast that is like for yours, for example, you're a one man podcast, but you have people on every single, every single week. I, that's something that I have been striving to do a little more is to try to see if I can get, uh, you know, other podcasters on or, you know, some of these other people that I interact with on Twitter and things like that. And Comic Palooza was an excellent opportunity for me to get some of those, you know, to talk to some of those people. And, you know, I gave out some cards and was like, you know, hey, you know, if you get time, you know, my email and all of my information is on the back, you know, I'll, I'll hit you up on Twitter. We'll see if we can set aside some time and you can come on the show. Cause I feel like that's the thing my show is missing. Yeah. Hey, it's just like some days I'll sit here. Cause like, will you put that on yourself? I mean, it's not even really pressure that I'm putting on myself because I'm, I, the way I feel about it is if, if I have a guest, then I have a guest. If I don't, I'll sit here in front of this microphone and I'll run my mouth till I get tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, it didn't start out that way. It's just like the first couple yeah. of episodes, it was just me testing it out with friends. Yeah. And then, evolution. Yeah. And evolution then, is definitely key on a podcast. Yeah. And, um, it just so happened that, you know, by chance or however it worked out that I would happen to have another guest for every week. And sometimes I have three and four guests in a week or a damn, it was a one point in time to where I had a guest every day for two weeks. So that's fucking Damn. 14 guests. And now I just sat there at one time and I just uh, edited all the episodes as I need to. And I just put them in the auto queue and then just let them roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but the only thing that sucked about, you know, I don't mind getting like two or three in the can now just in case. But when you have a lot like that, you kind of. I felt like when I wasn't doing it actively, I was just, you know, letting them roll the way it was. I kind of lost it a little bit. It's not Mm -hmm. like it's just when it was time for me to actually record another podcast, like for real, for real, not like just to roll one out. I was just like, do I feel like really doing this? I mean, it was just so calm and relaxing to damn just sit back and just let the auto freaking recording go and is what a lot of people don't realize. It, this is like a fucking job, like a second, like a part time job. Yeah. <laughs> or some for some people, it's a full time job. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the dream. I mean, if I could do this for a full time job, I'd I'd be totally happy. You know, I'd, I'd be OK with that. See, Yeah. I mean, and I say that I say yes to that, too. But like, what would that really be like? You know, because like I'm scared. Honestly, I, I, I'm straight up with you. I mean, if the opportunity was to present itself to me, to like somebody came up to me, truckload of money. Hey, we want you to do this once a week. We'll pay you, you know, enough to sustain your household, you know, take care of your family and everything. I would be scared because yeah. I know how I feel about doing it right now when it's free. But to put that added pressure on somebody actually paying me to do some shit, you know, it's scary to me because like I kind of feel like that now I have three patrons three people that contribute to the show and if anything like how I was just saying a little while ago it's like sometimes I don't feel like doing this shit but I feel like I have to do this shit because people are contributing to the show because I mean this is what they show up for every week mm-hmm. and, you know even though it's only three people I can give a damn if it was only one person I you know I have to show up for them you know that's, I, that's just how I feel about it but man if this was a full time job, I don't know. Can, can you imagine it? Because like I barely thought about it, but I mean, it seems like you have a little more thought put into it. For me, uh, I, I I can tell you that if this were a full time job, and over the last two years, um, I've really been trying to uh, get out and see the amount of conventions that go on in the state of Texas is absolutely unreal. I mean, there is just about literally a convention every week for roughly about nine months out of the year. And for me to do this full time, that's what I would be doing is I would just be going around to all those conventions 
and just like it, I, you know, it wouldn't even have to be a, a a full three weekend thing, one day, and that was a goal that I had set for myself this year was that I wanted to go to more conventions and do more conventions and just kind of broaden my thing and not just you know uh, things like Comic Palooza, you know, which is a you know. A, evolution from a sole comic book convention to what's called a uh, considered a pop culture convention where it's just a culmination of everything um but there's uh there's anime conventions and i mean i haven't kept up on my anime since high school but i kind of feel like it would be pretty cool to go in and see and talk to some of those people and see you know what they've got going on and then there's there's art conventions where there are conventions where it's just, you know, uh, artists of, of, of all walks, you know, uh, standard, you know, oil canvas artists and comic book artists and people who just do sketches and things like that. And just like, as I delve into this black hole of information, uh, my eyes just widened and I just sat there and I was like, this would be my thing to be able to just go to as many of these conventions as possible just i mean uh back in january i was at uh pack south which is a gaming convention and i wasn't there as press there's i would never be able to get through those doors of press not ever (laughs) (laughs) i am i am not uh big in the gaming universe i don't i don't do the twitch thing i don't do the um the mixer service from microsoft so that's that's just not me um but I went and I did I think I I think I came out of that weekend. I was there all three days and I came out of that weekend I think with about fifteen hours worth of video. And I cut that down and you know, I'd sped up a lot of it, you know, put it to music and I threw it up on YouTube and I think I I think it's about twenty minutes worth of stuff, you know, just highlights. Yeah. And stuff. But I sat there and I was like, Yeah. I was like, you know, to do it full time, running around doing all those conventions, and maybe end up at PAX East one day as pressed, or E3 as press, or I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a real big fan of San Diego Comic Con. Well, uh, but to, isn't that like the birthplace though? No, it's it's really not. Um, that's for a lot of people who just do uh, nothing but go to conventions to buy stuff. That's kind of the, I guess like the Holy land Mm -hmm. as it were, but that's because that's where all the big stuff gets announced every year, all the movies and TV shows and all the celebrities go and things like that. The problem with going to San Diego comic con is it is so packed and so crowded for three days that you literally can't get anywhere. And Uh, there was a comic book store that I used to frequent and he went every other year and he always said that he, that he and his wife would go and they would bring, I think three or four other people and their job was to literally when the doors opened, make a beeline for a specific booth and stand in that booth to purchase something. And you could be there for three hours to six hours standing there waiting to purchase a thing. And it's just like, That's no. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I sat there and I was like, never San Diego. Not even if I got an invite. Um, New York Comic Con, probably. Um, definitely like a Wizard World uh, or Emerald City Comic Con. Um, that one's a pretty popular con and, but yeah, um, I was super psyched when I submitted my podcast for comic Palooza and I was kind of like, you know, man, you know, like they're not gonna, you know, cause I don't have a very big Twitter following yeah. and most of the people on Twitter don't interact with me very often. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, don't get me started I thought on Twitter. That's a fickle thing. It is. It's, it really is. It's, there's some days where it's just like, all these people are interacting with me. And then there's like weeks where it's like, I'm posting stuff and people are like, yeah, I get like one or two likes and it's just kind of like, Oh, it's kind of depressing. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I say it's fickle because like 
all I, all I use Twitter for is, you know, some connections, you know, to, you know, reach out to people like how I got a hold of you. Sure. And, um, you know, it's pretty much plugging the show every day, all day. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to my Twitter feed and you might see the same three or four or five posts a day because I'm trying to, you know, promote the current episode and the episode before that, and maybe the episode before that, you know, the spawn, the two sponsors that I have, the goddamn, the Patreon, all that shit. I mean, so I can understand why my Twitter may be the way it is because of that fact. But like when I do actually get on there and I'm engaging and I'm like posting content to where it'd be like, I, I would like some response, some feedback. I don't get that shit. Yeah. And I, I, me for myself, I find that uh, there was, I don't remember who it was. There was a, there was a podcast that I followed on Twitter for the longest time. And he got to a point where he was very literally posting stuff every hour. And I would pull up my Twitter feed and it was just long strings of stuff that he was posting. And it was like, Oh my God. Like this is just, okay, this is way too much mute. (laughs) Yeah. I, it's just, it was just an order. It was a Twitter overload and it was like, Oh yeah, I can't do this. (laughs) I remember one day I did that shit and it, it was like unintentional. I forgot that I linked my Twitter account to, um, it was another additional site that I would go and post up my episodes. I would have to manually upload them. So oh, okay. I, I had a backlog of episodes, so I was just in there loading episodes, just loading episodes, loading episodes. And every time I would load an episode, it would it, tweet it. It would tweet it. And I, I wouldn't privy to that. I forgot. So somebody messaged me and it was like, you are blowing up my timeline right now. And I go there and it was like episode 56, <laughs> 57, 58, 59. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I actually had uh uh a uh, a couple of creators that are local, uh Gray Bear Comics. Uh they they do a comic book and they're I want to say they're second issue. I want to say it was issue 2. Uh they were they've been on Kickstarter since issue 1 and um I want to say it was issue 2 the day the last day that it was before it got funded. Um, one of the creators took his Twitter and the gray bear comics Twitter and was just blowing up everything. I mean, it, it was just, it was his tweet and their tweet and his tweet and their tweet and his tweet and their tweet. And I kid you not, it crashed my Apple watch <laughs> because he was going so much. It was just, I, I was sitting there and I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, silence. And it just kept sitting there just vibrating on my wrist. And eventually it stopped and I was like, oh, thank God. And I looked down and it's rebooting and I was like, oh, <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> I, 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 I texted him and I was like, dude, you tweeted so much. You just crashed my Apple watch. And he was like, no, I didn't. I was like, yeah, no, seriously, you just crashed my Apple watch because you were tweeting so much. And he's like, well, got to spread the word. And I was like, yeah, I know you're not getting all those ret- retweets, by the way, but <laughs> I'll retweet a couple of them. <laughs> Yeah, just a few. And, you know, and that's another thing about Twitter that that, that seems like a rut in itself as well, because um, it's pretty much the same thing I was saying. I would put a poll up there and I'd be like, hey, I want some feedback. Here's option A, B or C. And, you know, there's yeah. physical buttons to press A, B or C. And I would get people that would like it and retweet it, but they wouldn't fucking vote. Wouldn't fucking, yep, no votes. Or they, or they would comment on it and yeah, no vote. Yeah. And it's like, like, eek, eek. Just, like, why can't you just answer the question? Um, I did a, for a while, uh, I tried to get polls as part of the show, where every week I would throw a poll up, and at the end of the week I would take the tally, and then I would talk about it on the next show. And I did that for a few weeks and was getting little to no response. You know, like one or two people would vote. And it's like, well, I can't really talk about the fact that, like, these two guys voted and they both voted for the same thing. That's not really a very good demographic. So I decided I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a little dirty. And Wonder Woman had just come out. Yeah. So I said, okay. Um, I posted a poll and it was, oh, does Wonder Woman sleep in pajamas, her armor, or in the nude? And then I posted a fourth, um, random one um i don't remember what, i, I want to say it was 
I want to say I, the random one I said was in a Deadpool costume or something like that, silly like that. And I actually got 56 people to vote. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, OK, so. All right. That's what I have to do. I have to be dirty about it. Well, I don't think I can be dirty every single poll. <laughs> yeah, I had some that I would get pretty good responses on. It would just be like, um, how do you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And you like a, you know, bread and, you know, just something like that. And then like the fourth option would just be some outlandish have nothing to do with the fucking question. It'd be like fucking. um a loaded AK machine gun. I was like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one people click. Yep. All the time. Now, yeah. I heard you um bring up some things when you was talking about um, going to PAX South and um, all the other different events and everything. Um, video games, as far as like Twitch and Mixer, and also you was talking about you had some video footage. Now, is that something that you dabble in as well? You um, do any video editing or video content, or is this just something that you're looking into? And how do you feel about, you know, seemingly how everybody else has a fucking podcast? Now we got people that everybody want to open up a goddamn game channel. Not saying that there's nothing wrong with that, but it seems to be a thing now, especially with um, the popularity of Fortnite. Oh, yeah. Um, And PUBG. Yeah, and PUBG. Um, yeah, uh, video is something I started uh, back in December. I decided I was like, you know what, I'd like to do some YouTube content and to kind of see. Uh, for a while, I was actually, every so often, if I was feeling squirrely, I would do a, uh, a Periscope while I was recording. Yeah. And so I would have all of my equipment and then I'd, you know, as I was was going through and I was looking at the comic book and, you know, I'd show everybody the comic book and I'd look through it and show them the art that I was talking about. And, and, um, I actually got a lot of really cool, engaging conversations that came out of the, those periscopes. Um, so I figured I was like, well, let me try my hand at, uh, YouTube and I've done, I've done a few video stuff. The problem with doing video editing is that the, the time it takes to get that done a lot of the time, especially for me, because I will videotape everything. And um, it's just like I've, I've got all this video I have to edit for Comic Palooza. And the only thing I've done is pull it off the memory card and put it on the hard drive and compile it all into uh, PowerDirector. And then it's like, OK, now I have to cut this off and I have to cut this off. And I have to because you have to watch the whole thing in its entirety to make sure that everything comes together okay, the audio is okay, and the audio is... I'm going to have to spend some odd time editing because the audio is so loud because it's a convention hall and the convention hall is so loud and I didn't bring a, uh, a windsock for my shotgun mic and so, yeah, the audio is super loud. But, you know, it's, it's, it's something I would like to get into more um, I'm working off of a Canon camcorder mm-hmm. and, uh, so it's not a very feature packed kind of thing. Uh, I'd like to get a DSLR, which is what a lot of, well, a lot of, I'd say probably 98% of the YouTubers out there are using. Yeah. And so I'd like to get that, but, um, man, as far as like the whole Twitch thing, I know a lot of podcasters are moving to, Twitch to do their, to, you know, do a live stream of their podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, Twitch didn't used to allow that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I actually got banned from Twitch trying to do that. And, um, I had even followed their rules and I was, I was not under the gaming channel and I was under another channel and yeah, they still booted me. Uh, so you Twitch, uh, I hate you. (laughs) <laughs> well, shit, I mean, if you try to do that now, you'd be welcome with open arms because, I mean, they got full blown networks and shit on Twitch now. Uh, they do. They do. Um, the the thing is, I because I, I own an Xbox and mm-hmm. uh, Microsoft has got their own uh, yeah, I heard it, streaming I service for Mixer. Yeah. And it actually runs a thousand times better than Twitch does on an Xbox. It's amazing. Um, but I just I sat there and I was like, I just I can't. 
bring myself to to do that every single week. Plus, I'd have to clean up my living room. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, like but before you called, I was like, I'm sitting there and I've, I've got my webcam up on, and I'm like, is he going to do a video call? I didn't ask, and I sat there, and so I kind of cleaned everything off of the uh, table a little bit, which is behind my head. <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm a ways away from that. I think I've done maybe two or three uh, video episodes with guests, and um, you know, just those three times kind of pissed me off because I mean, it, it, it the recording went smooth. It's just like I don't have the proper equipment to support video, so I got to yeah. damn sit there and marry the audio with the lips, and damn. Um, you know, it's a lot of buffering time. It's just like my computer can't handle that stuff. It might be something that I revisit later on when I get the system that I actually want yeah. and everything. But um, as for now, I just kind of refrain from doing the um, actual video stuff on my computer. What's weird is, is like you was talking about doing the YouTube content. That's something that I just recently started journeying into. I mean, I've always did video content on Instagram because, I mean, that's pretty much outside of Twitter and promoting the show, Instagram is pretty much my main thing is what I use. And, uh, and I would say that I would say that Instagram, like the Instagram stories and that kind of thing, I would say that is every bit as popular as people's YouTube channels. Yeah. I mean, I don't even use the story thing too much. It's like when I do use it, it's just kind of part of a post. Mm -hmm. So like if I post some artwork that I may have done on my Instagram feed, I mean, um, yeah, on my Instagram feed, I would go into the story and I would put the source material where the artwork started from or some of the outlines that I did before I started coloring it in. And right. that's kind of what I use the story for. Or if I got some um, promo codes for sponsors, I'll throw that in there or just, you know, general silly shit that I would never really do on the actual Instagram feed. I would throw in the story, but it's right. not nothing consistent. And that's the rule number one about YouTube is consistency, consistency. Yeah. It's just that's the big deal. Um, there's there's actually a, a guy I follow on YouTube that I've been utilizing his tips and tricks, uh, Think Media. And he does – he's super into tech and how it integrates with video and YouTube. And he's been super duper helpful in pointing me in the direction Um I would want to go if I wanted to do that. And I, you know, before I started watching his channel, I had no idea where to go. I bought that camcorder okay, and I, I sat there and I was like, man, I shouldn't have done that. And yeah, that and yeah he talks about it's like, yeah, the camcorder thing. Do what? Oh, yeah, my bad. I was like, yeah, his, oh. his face always popping up on my feeds. I had to damn make sure that was the same person you was talking about. <laughs> yeah, Sean from Think Media. And yeah, he's, he's, he's a cool guy and he's, he's, just I pointed me in the right direction. I have the camera that I want. I have all the gear that I want on my Amazon list. It's, it's you know, a monetary thing at this point. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. And, and getting the equipment necessary to edit all of that is, I think it's really pricey really quick. Yeah, and does. so it's like, man. See, even right now, like with the um, few videos that I've done now, I've done everything strictly on my iPad and I'm content with keeping it that way because, I mean, yeah. I feel like it's really convenient. And just with the um, software that I use is a, a Luma Fusion. You know, this shit was a $20 program for your iPad. But the thing works damn near like a computer. I mean, I can do green screen, chroma key editing. I can crop out images and everything. Mm hmm. You know, and that was that's pretty much the two or three videos that I have on my Instagram. I mean, not Instagram, uh, YouTube page right now is me actually testing out the software and the equipment that I have. And, you know, I mark it all over the videos that I hey, this is testing. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, don't bash me too bad. But I like to do it that way because it's showing progression. You know, if I keep doing videos, they're going to see subtle changes in from the first video that I actually posted all the way up until, you know, the desired result that I'm think I'm getting with doing all yeah. this shit. So, I yeah. Mean, and, it's crazy. and progression is, is, you know, the evolution of the channel, you know, it's like, I figure by the time I hit a hundred episodes, it'll be like, okay, so for episode 100, I'm going to show you all this really super horrible episode one I did. 
for those of you who did not listen to it and it's oh it's just i mean you can hear it in my voice because i'm so, so super nervous and it's it's, it's just <laughs> and it's, it's i was sat there and i was just like i can't believe i uploaded that to the internet <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can hear myself when I go back and listen to the very first episode of this show. And it's just like, <laughs> um, I can hear the change in my voice. I mean, I've lived with my voice for 36 years, but like first recording and then down to what is this? This will be 223 episodes. Huh? So, I mean, not 200, 100, 100. I'm damn, I'm getting oh. way ahead of my goddamn self. <laughs> 123 episodes later I can hear the difference even within tens of episodes so from episode 1 to episode 10 there's a change from episode 10 to episode 20 there's a change you know I can just I can I can tell yeah yeah I had a lot of friends that were telling me it's like that the, you know I uploaded that first episode and they were like dude that was rough like were you like you were just you were super like you could tell that I was super nervous because I was I was breathing heavy and like it was just in my voice. It was shaky and I was on a blue yeti. Yeah. So and those those suckers pick up everything. <laughs> and yeah, it was I. But yeah, as like even if, by the time I got to episode three, they were just like, dude, you feel more relaxed now. And I was like, yeah, you know, and I made the decision that instead of sitting I would stand while I recorded um, because I, I love to talk with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> and even if I'm not talking to anybody, I'm doing it right now. And <laughs> but it's, I, I didn't want to, I made sure I didn't want to hit the table too. Cause the, you get that. Boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. I had that problem too. <laughs> and uh, it's, and I'm, I'm still working off this stupid spring scissor arm that, Ugh, yeah does it every time but One yeah i like you know just finding that level of comfort is just and once you get it and once you get that flow it just every week just flows off and it's just like sometimes you get to that point where you're like i really don't feel like recording tonight but you know what i'm gonna force myself to do it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna get it done yeah and then like as soon as the recorder come on you get to talk and it's just like all right i'm good now yep. here we are that goddamn um what was it um yes ideal setup like all right i know you say you was in your living room recording and everything but like if you can set up your dream podcast palace i mean what would be some of the things oh, man. Some, of the, some of the comforts you would have i mean what would be your ideal setup oh um first of all my wife and i already discussed that i will be getting that we need a bigger place because I need a room for just my stuff. Yeah. Um, just my comic books and statues and just bookcases of stuff. And so, yeah, that environment just perfect where all of my art is on the walls and all of my comic books are in the room instead of, you know, hidden in a closet for the most part. Well, about half of them are in a closet and I get to display some of them, but you know, my computer and my mic stand and probably by that point, uh, I will have, you know, gotten the equipment, of course, want. And it'll be me standing in front of that mic with a green screen behind me doing my thing on YouTube. And I, I definitely would probably do a half and half thing like it would be some of me standing in front of the green screen and then some of me standing in probably in front of one of my bookshelves with all of my comics and stuff on it yeah like here right now as i sit we have a media room is wall to wall well i wouldn't say wall to wall but every wall has a dvd shelf on it with movies full to the brim and we have like the chairs for the freaking projector and all this other stuff i mean I would love to be in this room 24 seven, but I know that's not <laughs> logical because damn, this is the media room. So mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting here running my suck with you. I mean, it's cool because it's later on in the night and the kids use a retreat to their room and, you know, play on tablets and shit till they doze off. Mm -hmm. If this was during the daytime, fuck no, this shit wasn't happening because everybody mm -hmm. want to come in here and watch a goddamn movie. 
mm-hmm. and do all this other bullshit while I'm sitting here trying to record. So I've been talking about it for months and months since we moved here in February that like my wife gave me to go ahead to convert the garage. But Ooh. I'm still kind of iffy. I mean, I just want to start off with a corner of the garage and then branch out as I need to. Because like I already have the area that I want marked off. So damn, I just have to get the materials and start putting walls up in here. And I mean, it'll be comfortable enough for me to put all my stuff in there and have it the way I want it for the time being. And she can still park her her car in the garage. Yeah. But, you know, she pretty much is giving me the full on to take the whole thing. And I just want to start with that one room first and then just move out from there. I'm like, okay, now I want to add this on. Oh, now I want to add this on. All right. Now put your goddamn car out in the motherfucking driveway. <laughs> Give me the rest of the shit. <laughs> now all of a sudden you got a man cave slash podcast studio. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, um, my intent, like in my brain is just like, I'm going to build this corner in the garage to be my full room. Just have everything I want in there. And then now when I'm know where the direction is from there, I will add on. And that one room that I started off in would be the full on studio. So it would be the booth inside of the full man cave. Right. Yeah. But yeah, my dad coming here this weekend and um, he's the freaking architect. He's the one that can build shit out of rubber bands and pipe cleaners and all kind of crazy shit. So me and him going to survey <laughs> the area and probably do some groundwork. Yeah, I used to uh, keep my uh, my my setup in uh, a corner of the living room between the couch and the love seat. And uh, yeah, it, it you know it was it was my mic on the stand, and you know I'd tip up my mic, and then I had. Um, my camcorder set up and cause I had always said, you know, like, yeah, I'll just pick it up and I'll just put it right here in front of me, flick it on and it'll be good to go. And it just, it sat there until I was using it for other things. But yeah, my daughter's friends just come over all the time and they'd be like, they'd look over and they'd be like, why does your dad have a mic? Why is it there? And it's like, Oh, that's his podcast setup. And they're like, oh, is he on YouTube? I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, my um, my kid told me that somebody at her school, their father, listens to my podcast, which I think she was just blowing smoke up my ass trying to make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I mean, because I do comic books, I don't see any of my daughter's friends wanting to listen to it. Um, I actually Sunday for comic Palooza, I took my daughter and one of her friends. Um, cause I have a tradition with my daughter every year. I take her to comic Palooza and I figured this year, uh, I had already bought a three day pass prior to getting picked as press. Cause I figured I was like, if I'm not going to get picked as press, I'm still want to go. Yeah. So I'm still going to do my thing. It just won't be with a press badge, whatever. And so I had, two press badges and gave my daughter one and then gave my three day pass to her friend and was like, we're going to go on Sunday and you guys can go like, you guys have to come and, and do some stuff with me for a little while. I was like, but then I will let y'all run off and, and do your thing. And so, yeah, that was, you know, I was videotaping them, um, asking Brandon, I told them, I was like, you know, just walk the con floor and, you know, stop and ask someone, Hey, do you mind if I ask you a question? And I will videotape you asking them, you know, which do you prefer, DC or Marvel? And I, I <laughs> Lord love 11 year olds. I ended up giving up because the only people they wanted to ask were the cosplayers. Yeah. So when you walk up to Deadpool and ask Deadpool, do you prefer DC or Marvel? Well, I wonder what he's going to say. <laughs> so it was like, I, I think I did that for about 10 or 12 people. And finally I was just like, all right, you know what? We're done. Y'all go do whatever it is you want to do. And all of a sudden it was just like two puffs of smoke were standing in front of me. Like, where'd they go? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, truth be told, I mean, I I like doing the podcast. I mean, borderline love doing the podcast. I've gotten arguments with my wife over this damn show, but like, 
truth be told, I think I really more like the production part of it. I hate editing, but like still something about putting the show together, you know, you know, connecting with people, getting the people, you know, you know, in the same space so we can record. I like that aspect. I like, you know, the leg work. And even with these um videos or whatever that I've been doing with the uh, YouTube and everything, I feel like, you know, I can do it for me, but I'd rather be behind the camera and having somebody else sitting there running their mouth while I'm messing with the camera, you know, tinkering with the lights and the audio mm-hmm. and everything like that. I, I feel I feel more drawn to that than actually doing the thing. Yeah, and that's a thing for me too. Uh, I I actually was talking with a couple of cosplayers at Comic Palooza. Um, they were uh, there were three of them, and uh, you know I I was just going around taking photos, and I was just like, hey, you know, let me get a photo of you. And I was asking every cosplayer I could possibly find to get a photo, so I had as many photos to upload on Instagram and stuff as I possibly could, and um, I came across three of them. And two of them were still getting ready. And I asked them, I said, hey, when you guys are ready, I'd love to get a photo with the three of you. And they were like, oh, OK, cool. And I was talking with the third who was already ready to go because she showed up prepared, like she's <laughs> like, like she said. And uh, she was like, so do you want us to like pose? And I was like, yeah, posing would be great. You know, I was like, if you could stand this way and if you get them to stand this way, I was like, that would be just super awesome. And it was it was two Deadpools and a Spider-Man. And, um, and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to go I, – I snapped the first photo and I was like, all right. I was like, now if – you know, and I repositioned them and I moved the camera and I was like, okay. And I snapped another photo and I was like, all right, good. And I snapped a couple more and I was like, all right, that looks good. And they looked at me and they were like, you don't want to get – like you don't want to get in on the photo with us? And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy behind the camera. Yeah, that's – yeah, I don't do the selfie thing. <laughs> Yeah, and see, and that's another thing too. I mean, that's, you talk about evolution all the time. Um, that was a big thing last year for my Instagram. If you go to my Instagram right now, it does like 4,300 posts on there. <laughs> and, um, wow. dating back to, I think what, 2009, 2010, when I first opened the Instagram account, it was just what you, it was what you just said. It was me taking pictures of things. Never me in a picture, rarely, you know, and um, that was like what I said, 2009, 2010 or whatever. I recently separated from the military in 2016. And from the day I got out, I took a picture of myself every day for 365 days. So if you started at that point on Instagram, there's a picture of my mug every day for 365 days. And it was just like, I felt like I had, I never, I guess I wasn't comfortable with myself because like for the 16 years prior to that moment, you know, I've been pretty much the same person, you know, in the military, doing military things, you know, Mm -hmm. commanding troops and so on and so forth and all this other crap, you know, and I only knew how to be that and do that. And when I got out and I didn't have to do that anymore, you know, that's kind of when I found, I fell into the podcast, you know, it was a more of a rediscovering and everything. So like I made it a point, even when I didn't want to do it, to take a picture of myself every day for that first year. And you can see from when I went, <laughs> when I first got out to having this clean shaven face to this big woolly thing <laughs> back down to a clean shaven face after I got a job. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and also, you know, branching out and talking to other people over the internet about podcasts and then doing podcasts with other people. That's when the Walmart thing started happening. And it was just, it took on a life of its own. It became part of the show and, um, how some people, you know, beyond the podcast kind of know me on the internet. So like, if I get somebody like, you know, just, I'm just using you as an example. Um, I got you on the show and uh, we talking about your podcast and I talk about my Instagram. I would bring it up. And he was like, oh, yeah, man, I love that shit, man. You be in Walmart all the time. And people would say stuff like that. I'm like, ah, they're they, they looking at my shit. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, it's and crazy. that's that's a great feeling. Yeah, and just like I don't know what to say because like it's <laughs> it's another thing too. People, I'm like, yeah, I was in the military, and he's like, oh, thank you for your service, and I just like, okay, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> I chose to do it, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. And also, I'm gonna tell you about a travesty right now. I'm here, and I, you know, I'm not talking specifically to you. I, I just want you to hear this because I want the main focus of me saying what I'm about to say is for everybody that's listening and may be listening. Uh, it, there's a travesty among us right now. Um, how many episodes you got out? Um, sixty-three. Well, no, it's over that because I've got bonus episodes, so I'd say probably 70-ish. All right. This man has almost 80 episodes venturing into that 100-episode um, era. I am on iTunes right now looking at some stuff for your show. And this guy, this man that I'm talking to right now, Walker the Geek, only have one, one review. review. And this <laughs> shit was over a year ago. Yep. <laughs> God damn it. I am typing you a review as we speak. I think that was uh episode four and that was a coworker, I think. Oh man. It, this is a travesty, everybody. Please go send this man a review. I don't give a fuck if you haven't listened to the show. Just press the five stars. <laughs> Just put smiley faces in the comments. Just get this man some some reviews on this shit. I pulled up your joint. Because when I went to um, look up the episode earlier, it says not enough to review. I was like, what the fuck? And I scrolled down. Yeah. It's like, well, you got to ass load of episodes. What the fuck is going on here? Uh, and, and you know, I I don't actually, you know, the podcasters all over the place do yeah. the kind of thing. You know, it's like, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all that. You know, I just I, for a while I was doing that, but it didn't feel natural. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. It was just weird. So I don't do the whole like, hey, make sure you go over to iTunes, review, subscribe, all that. that like, it just didn't feel natural to me. So I just, it just like fell to the wayside. Yeah. Well, you have two reviews now. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. See, and, and that's another thing I, I hear what you're saying about that. It's just like, I have people that um decided to sponsor my silly ass. So. You know, I'm always talking about them everywhere except for the podcast. <laughs> so if I'm on Instagram, <laughs> hey, make sure you check out the sponsors. If I'm on Twitter, hey, make sure you check out on the sponsors. And then here we are. We get on the podcast. We've been talking for about an hour and we can probably go more than this. And I would not mention the sponsor not a goddamn once. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's just like. I'm not doing it on purpose. I just like I get wrapped in the conversation or whatever we're talking about. And I fucking forget. Mm-hmm. And now, um, and that's the crux of my show as well. I don't take any notes. I don't do any research. I just ramble the shit off the top of my head and everything. And it just happens that way. So when I did this recent YouTube video that I'm editing now, I actually had notes and talking points and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, I even said it in the video. I was like, this is a far departure from the podcast because I actually have fucking notes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, getting back to what you said about it being a part-time job. When I first started the show, I literally spent probably two hours three a day, hours, two, three hours every day putting stuff together. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at all the news stories every day and picking out like, all right, I want to talk about this one. And this was the one I want to talk about for this news story and this and this and this. And like, you know, uh, Oh, that's right. The, you know, the flash was on and yeah, I got to talk about the flash and the flash was this and this and this. And it was just like, it was just like, okay, this is way too much work. Now it's, I read the book, I do a paragraph worth of synopsis and the next book and a paragraph of synopsis. And it's just like, yeah, I f- this is yeah, this is so much better than work. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, see, and that's another thing too. Is like I'm a professional wrestling fan, and Ooh. when I first started, well, when I was thinking about starting a podcast, I thought about it being a wrestling podcast, 
And then I'm, I got a side note on that as well. But it's just like I listen to wrestling podcasts. I got like three or four that I listen to in rotation and I have been for years. And it's like I listen to what they talk about and how they have it prepared and set up and they read and they dive into rumors and gossip and all this other shit. And that's wow. that's stuff I don't do because, I mean, I look at wrestling kind of like how I look at movies. Like if it's a movie I really want to see, I don't look at trailers. I don't read spoilers. I don't look into the background mm-hmm. of the film. You know, I'm kind of like that with wrestling because, I mean, you can find spoilers and rumors and all kind of shit. But I don't look for those things unless they're blaringly obvious. They bash me in the motherfucking face. <laughs> but um, I was like, I can't do it because... When I watch wrestling, I turn my brain off. I just want to be entertained. I just want to watch a show, yep. you know, and I don't want to sit there with a notepad, you know, writing down all the intricacies and in this show was like, oh, you know, this and this and this and this and this. I just want to fucking talk about what I saw, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why I just kind of shied away from doing that. But I tell you what, <laughs> back to that side note, Instagram or maybe even Twitter, but mainly Instagram, out of all the shit I post, everything, wrestling posts gets the most love out of everything I post. Oh, oh yeah. And that's I, crazy to me, man. It's just like, I don't even have to necessarily be a wrestling post, but if I put in WWE or, you know, a specific wrestler's name, Mm-hmm. That those tweets, uh, I mean, not tweets, but um, those freaking Instagram posts get all the love. They got that's probably like the highest tweet counts. I mean, uh, I keep saying tweets, Instagram <laughs> uh, hits and clicks that I would get off of wrestling posts if you go through my archive of shit. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a there's a coupling uh, wrestling podcast that uh, I every so often I'll interact with them on Twitter. And uh, yeah, those guys, you just like you see their posts and it's just like, holy crap. Like, they're just, they're like, you know, the whole rumor with John Cena breaking up with what's her face is yeah. with his wife. And it's just like, oh, my God, this is really a conversation people are having. <laughs> yeah, no, man, it, it's fucking crazy. And it's not just like secluded to a small wrestling audience. It's just like this is mainstream me mm-hmm. and shit. Yeah, it's it's blown up as I, like I think it was trending on Twitter like for an entire day last week or something. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and I just don't understand it. I mean, well, I understand. I mean, I'm just like wrestling. Wrestling is popular to me. But for it to be that popular, this is like a small I mean, well, shit. Hell, it's a billion dollar company now with mm-hmm. a Fox deal it just uh, signed up for. But damn. I didn't really think that many people <laughs> was into wrestling. <laughs> well, and I mean, especially since like so many wrestlers are just, you know, celebrities for celebrities sake, not so much that they're just rest- like John Cena and the rock. And it, it's just like, dude, they're just like, they're celebrities now. Like it doesn't matter that they used to wrestle or that they still do. It's just like, they're just, they're, they're in mainstream media. Yeah, you know it's like when Hulk Hogan stopped wrestling and started doing movies. He's just in regular mainstream media now. Like um the video that I'm editing now, freaking um that was a talking point in the video about uh John Cena has a cartoon that he executive produced for WWE called Dallas and Robo, and uh, he is a goddamn it's an animation. He's a goddamn big orange robot with fucking flames painted on his fucking chest. <laughs> and and I say it in the video, it's just like, to hear John Cena's voice come out of anything other than John Cena is fucking weird. It's weird. And almost unnerving at some points. Because he had that cartoon movie of Ferdinand where he was a, a fucking bull and shit. And that was him? Yes, that's John Cena. Oh my god. <laughs> And also those pistachios commercials with the big ass elephant. That's John Cena. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Because now, now all I can think of is boop pistachio. 
Boop, Stachio. <laughs> I know that's freaking John Cena. And when I, I was like, I first seen that elephant commercial, and I was just like, that's not like John Cena. Nah, that ain't John Cena. He, he's a fucking wrestler. He ain't gonna be doing the motherfuckers pistachio commercials. And then commercial come on again. That's fucking John Cena. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, man. It, it's it's weird. Just to hear his voice come out of something that's not his face. Oh, and- most definitely. Well, um... I, I, I watched the movie Trainwreck specifically because he was in it. Yeah. And that whole emotional breakdown thing that he had, I was like, what the fuck am I watching right now? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I look like Marky Mark 8 Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and then like a lot of the ladies got a kick out of seeing a towel around his penis. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was. And then they had, um. But he had like a whole bunch of little cameos. He was in another movie to where he was a drug dealer and shit. He had tattoos all over his face. I forgot what that was. Um, uh, no, I don't know. Then he was in um, was that um, Daddy's Home Two? Yeah. And he had the little cameo at the end of Daddy's Home, the first one. Now he got the movie uh, Blockers out. Yeah. Then he's going to be in the freaking Transformers Bumblebee prequel. Oh, is he? Yep. Wow. Then he's going to be Duke Nukem here pretty soon. I can see him being Duke Nukem. I I, I don't feel like he's got a pretty good voice for it. I, you know, I, I'm kind of nostalgic with my Duke Nukem. You know, I like the, this is Duke Nukem, but you know, I, I, I think he'll do. I think he'll do it justice. I think he's got the right kind of voice for it. We have to just wait and see. <laughs> it's just like I'm not against it. I know I'll watch it because I mean I can't. Yeah. I can't shit on it until I see it. Well, I mean, and you kind of have to picture it's like John Cena going kick him in the balls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did that in wrestling, so I mean, I, I guess it's, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go slay some aliens. Yeah, it's like whoa. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll just have to deal with it. And then there's um, you know, off of John Cena. Now they're bringing back Spawn with Jamie Foxx as the lead. Oh no! And, uh, That's, you, now you're doing all the things that I was thinking. <laughs> the, to be to, to, to be fair, um. Because Todd McFarlane is is directing the thing, it yeah. is entirely possible that Jamie Foxx will only play um, the role of when he's alive and could just be doing voice acting. Because technically, when Spawn originally came back from the dead, he was a white guy. What? So, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, it's Todd McFarlane. I don't know. And apparently Jamie Foxx has been bugging Todd McFarlane for yeah. over a decade to play Spawn. So yeah, that's, I just found that out and I, I referenced that in the video as well. And I just like, I mean, I guess it can't be all that bad if you got somebody that's that passionate about pursuing a project and then fucking Todd McFarlane picked him. So there it is. Yeah. Well, and look what happened with Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool. Yeah. I mean, but, but, He's I picture been, Ryan Reynolds yes, as Deadpool all yes. the time. And then That's just, even the Deadpool comics reference Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's it strangely enough, because I read Deadpool and Green Lantern. And so every time I read Deadpool in my head, I'm hearing Ryan Reynolds say it. Yes. But at the same time, every time I read Green Lantern and I see Hal Jordan talk, I'm still hearing Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I don't know about that one, though. I hear the... Um, <laughs> I forget what. Yeah, I hear the black guy. The, oh, John Stewart. Yeah, John Stewart. That's the one I hear. Who 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 you hear when you um, who who who's your Batman voice in your head? Oh, uh, the Batman voice. Man, uh, Kevin Conroy. Bam, you the man. That's why it's I, just if I can go just, back and give you another five star review just off of that, I could. <laughs> yeah, it just it has to be just just because of the way that uh, the level of, you know, I mean, t- you know, to to bring out that character like that vocally, 
mm-hmm. is just he just he did it the best. You know, it's like Mark Hamill being the number one Joker. Like yeah. I don't care if it's live action or animated. Mark Hamill, the voice of Joker. And I did not know that was him for like years. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just well, like, just the like entire time did. watching it as a kid, I was a big Star Wars fan when I was a kid. But watching Batman the animated series, I never paid attention to the credits. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I became older that I was like, um. Was I watching? I was watching an interview of Mark Hamill talking about something else, and they asked him to do the Joker laugh, and I was like, "What?" And he did the Joker laugh, and I was like, "Oh my god, that was him! Holy!" God. I know it's crazy, man. And I seen a, I seen an interview to where I mean, he just turned it on and turned it off just that quick. Yeah, so he, he does. He just jump in and he jump out. I was like, "Oh man, that's fucking creepy." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's that's another one too. I mean. That's the voice I hear in my head. Like when when I think about the Joker or when I read something about the Joker, I hear Mark Hamill's voice and I hear Kevin Conroy's voice as Batman. Mm-hmm. And like if I, I had to put a face on it, I guess, you know, Michael Keaton would be my Batman. Oh, oh thank God. Bless you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, that's fucking crazy. See, you, you can you can you can tell people that he and I are probably about the same age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that animated series the batman animated series i mean that that was freaking amazing yeah and man they don't make fucking cartoons like they used to man even mm-hmm. like recent shit like the teen mm-hmm. titans <sighs> oh that teen titans go i can only tolerate that for about 10 minutes and it's just like i can't do this anymore now i mean it's popular the teen titans go i mean and there's oh, yeah there's freaking pop culture quotable shit out of there they do their little sing and do- sing yeah i can't talk sing and dance videos mm-hmm. and everything in there and that's fucking amazing but like i prefer the old teen titans oh yeah and um what else uh the freaking the old x-men series on fox oh yeah they got that yeah. spider-man all that shit man all that shit was awesome and then now it's just like eh. <laughs> yeah i to be fair uh the like the current stuff on on the Marvel's YouTube channel, uh, Marvel HQ. Um, those those animated series are they're doing they they do a pretty good job of staying um, less hokey. Yeah, I guess without using the word stupid. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's so many cartoons these days. They just it's like I, f- I can feel my brain cells dying. Well, I watch and it's just like I can't. No. Now, um, you said earlier that you was a Star Wars fan. What do you think yep. about Solo? I haven't seen it yet. Okay, I just seen it, so I ain't gonna give you any spoilers or anything. But my my opinion of it, I mean, it was a good movie. It was an okay movie, but I like Rogue One better as it compares to a Star Wars story movies. Okay, yeah, and I I really liked. And uh, so many people just look at me when I say this, but I like the additional building that Rogue One did. Mm-hmm. And I, I just the way that they just immediately the end of the movie just flows right into a new hope. And I just thought yep. that was amazing. Yes, I like I was just, that was I was like, yeah, this works, you know, sad that spoiler alert uh, that everybody dies Everyone at the dies. end, but you know, <laughs> but it had to be that way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, um, and then even after uh, Rogue One came out, I believe um, Jin Erso's character made an appearance in Rebels. And then I want to say there was a reference in episode eight. I could be wrong. But yeah, it's like it's nice to see them, you know, interlacing those things and interacting with those things. And you know, I'm hearing mixed reviews with Solo. It's pretty much one of those movies where you either love it or you hate it. I mean, I don't hate it, and I don't love it. I just thought it was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie for what it is. And I really wanted to walk in as like because 
I, in the beginning, I had kind of this thing that was like, man, this is going to mess with continuity so bad. And there's going to be so many things in there that I just, uh, and it, I kind of sat there and I was like, no, let me just kind of go in as being a, like, let me just take it for what it is, you know, for the entertainment value, if nothing else. Yeah. And, you know, see if I can enjoy it. Is this like, um, I haven't seen the six movies in a long time. The, um, you know, freaking episode one, two, three, four, five, six. I haven't seen those in a while. And then now um, to go in to watch Force Awakens and, um, what was the other one? Oh, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, and, um, here Solo. It was just like a whole nother set of movies. It was just like I almost they when they did reference, you know, the the first six, mm-hmm. I kind of it kind of blew over my head until I went back the second time and checked it out. I was like, oh, all right, that's this. And yeah, because I had to take it in as his own individual movie before I had to go back and notice the references and all that other stuff. Right. But I mean. The ones that are out now, I like them a lot. And I, yeah. I don't know if my opinion would change if I went back and watched the original six, but I like what's out right now. See, and I, I'd take um, episodes seven and eight as not, not, not so much as them trying to change the story, but it's like you guys have to understand that like Han, Luke, and Leia are old. Yeah. Okay. Not just in these stories, but in real life. life. Okay. And one of them's <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they have to be kind of, you know, pushed aside for this new band of characters that we have to get. I'm sorry, guys. You're never going to get those Admiral Thrawn, that Admiral Thrawn trilogy as a movie. It's never going to happen. Deal. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. But. You know, the cast of characters that they're building is very well rounded and I they're making me like the characters and they're making me root for the characters. And, uh, you know, I can't really ask for anything more out of a Star Wars movie. Yeah. I mean, I know, man, it's just like The Last Jedi. Kylo Ren was saying all the things that I agree with. I mean, he was pretty much (laughs) saying what you were just saying. These motherfuckers are old. Just let that shit die. I'm the new, new shit, man. Just enjoy me and what we got going on over here. Just just, just forget all that shit. And he's like, kill it if you have to. I mean, hell, he done killed fucking Han Solo. Mm -hmm. Luke is fucking dead. Leia will be here soon. You know, all that shit is gone, man. Just give it the new shit. Just this is for yeah. a new generation now. I mean, hey, man, you got your memories of the old shit. Watch them shits on Blu-ray or DVD or VHS if you got them shits. And yeah. just enjoy <laughs> them for what they were. This is the new shit. This is we need to move the fuck on. <laughs> I actually have um, the original VHS releases of the, um, four, five and six. And then I have the remastered releases in that um, Darth Vader gold yeah. sleeve box. Oh, yeah. And then I have them on DVD. And then I have the Blu-ray set. So it's like, yeah. yeah. This, this, is like, my, this is my thing. It's just like, I rem- I've seen the originals, you know, from way back when they first were introduced. I've seen the originals. And then I know they went back and they made some alterations and some digital updates and everything mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And I know that's pretty much if you buy the the six now, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. But I don't really want that. I want the original shit that I saw, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm going to have to look for that and dig for it. And, you know, and it's just like, I know I'm a collector above anything. I mean, I'm going to watch these movies eventually, but they're just going to come in this room where I'm sitting right now and then they're going to die on the shelf for the rest of these movies that's in here. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my thing is every so often I look at because I've got two bookshelves full of DVDs and I just look and I go, I don't even know what's up here anymore. 
I got- and then I go through and it's like my digital library is three times that size. And it's just like, uh, yeah, see, and that's the thing too. I mean, I got all these things cataloged in my phone, but I like digital only when it comes to video games. Cause when I, it's, it's just cause it's a, a small, one small thing. When I'm tired playing of one video game, I don't feel like getting up to take the disc out to put another disc in to play a different video game. I just want exactly. to switch through the menu. So that's where digital comes into play for me. I prefer to get video games digitally. But damn, as far as movies go, hard copy. I got to have a physical copy. In this room that I sit in right now, there's 1,194 movies. Wow. So I I have to have a physical copy. You know, that's just... It's a thing. And then some of these are double prints because damn, I got to have the Blu-ray now. So yeah. <laughs> I, I had Taken 1, 2, and 3 on DVD and then I found Taken 1, 2, and 3 on Blu-ray for like $7. So <laughs> now I'm stuck with both of them. Got to get that. I mean, that's a hell of a deal. So now I'm stuck with both of them and then damn pawn shops, very few will take in DVDs or even some of the game trade places are barely taking DVDs and if they do, they give me a fucking quarter or 50 cent per. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and then flip around and sell them for seven buck fifty. Yeah. <laughs> shit, more than that. I, I No shit, no lie. Over have here, you, behind Have you been me. to the Houston Movie Exchange? Which one? Uh, I didn't, honestly, I didn't know there were multiple. <laughs> well, I only know, I don't know of Houston Movie Exchange, but I been to a movie exchange so I don't know if we talking about the same thing it could be something totally different it could be it's it's been a while since I've driven past it it could just be movie exchange now a long time ago it was Houston movie exchange and that was where you went to you you went there to trade in your VHS to get a blu-ray <laughs> or a, a, a VHS to get a DVD yeah. yeah and that was they would give you the credit toward purchasing the DVD copy I had a before we moved here, when we was living in, um, I think it was North Carolina. That's so. This was some years back. I had a place, man, that was awesome. It was like a pawn shop exchange place or whatever, and they would damn. They knew I was coming in to buy movies from them, so they would give me the max they could give me on DVDs because they was gonna turn around and sell them anyway, so I can get store credit to buy more movies from them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we had that that freaking that thing i mean they see me they see what i had they give me max credit so i can just turn right back around and buy shit from them and i can't find i never could find another place like that anywhere have i been ever since yeah the the one that we used to go to it was just they just yeah they it was like gamestop is now they just lowball you as much as they possibly could in the hopes that you would or they would do like it would be like, well, I can give you a dollar, but if you want store credit, I'll give you a dollar seventy five. Yeah. It was like, look. <laughs> and then sometimes I don't even feel bad about this shit because either I'm a damn, it's gonna sit here and get no love, or I would rather just like here, just take this shit and damn, at least somebody could buy it or find it for them or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and I have I have a strong feeling that at some point in time that just DVDs are just going to start disappearing. It's already starting, dude. And yeah, for, I mean, it, you know, it's just like, well, I mean, if they disappear, they disappear. Shit, like it's I not mean, Blu-ray is starting to disappear. <laughs> yeah, because everything wants to go the 4K Ultra HD. And, you know, that's not bad unless you have a fucking 4K HD goddamn player and a fucking yeah. 4K TV. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's more shit you're going to have to buy. But if you got it, that shit looks very damn nice. Yeah. Well, and the, it's just like when when Blu-rays first came out. Yeah. The um, with HD. I, I was sitting there and I would go into Fry's Electronics. Mm-hmm. And they would those. have these two 55-inch TVs set up right next to each other. And like, this is a DVD and this is a Blu-ray. And I'd go, wow, look at the difference. Hey, can I get the remote for the TV on the DVD player? And he'd be like, why? And I'm like, well, I want to adjust the settings on that TV to the same settings as that TV and see the difference. Well, the settings are the same. No, they're not. 
I can tell by looking at the TVs. <laughs> 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 and it would just be a game to see whoever was standing there for them to just be like, all right, look, I just want to sell some D- I just want to sell some Blu-ray players. Okay. It's like, no, no, that's all. I just wanted you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Stop trying to con me. <laughs> and then that's the thing, like with my wife is, is, um, I'm in the, I'm in the TVs and all this other shit the same way. It's just like, I've, I've bought a TV and brought it home. Never took it out the box turn around and brought it right back to the store and got a different TV. Because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, the specs on this is different. I read this, this, and this. All right, nah, fuck this. I can't have this TV. This is inferior bullshit. I'm taking it back right now. <laughs> so, that's how I get about my electronics. My wife, she don't give a shit. As long as the damn thing work, <laughs> yep. it turn mm-hmm. on and play movies, she don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, that's because you wear glasses. You can't tell the difference anyway. <laughs> Oh, damn. Low blow. <laughs> yeah, and usually she try to give me a low blow. In the, <laughs> I'm like, ah, ah, please don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, and it, my wife was just having a conversation with me earlier. Um, my parents came over um, last week, and they they hadn't been to the apartment. I don't even know how long. And But my dad saw that we had this we, – we've got a, a – Six, either a 65 or a 70 inch TV. I don't remember what. Um, but we bought it because the entertainment center that we built at Ikea was – it's massive. And the 50 inch TV we had in there did not look right. Yeah. <laughs> it just looked pathetic and puny. So we went and we bought this nice big screen TV. And I want to say two years ago for Christmas, we got my dad a brand new 55 inch LED Samsung or a Toshiba. I don't remember what, but it's a really nice TV and they don't have a whole lot of space where the TV is. Well, he comes over here and apparently he went and told my mom that he needs to get a bigger TV for Christmas because I have a big TV (laughs) and I'm sitting here and I looked at my wife and I was like, what? (laughs) I'm going with it. Like, we just bought him that TV. <laughs> and that's the thing with my old lady as well, too, man. I mean, she's not into tech like I am, but she do want bigger things or whatever. Because we started out when we first got together with a 45, then that went to a 55. Mm-hmm. We had a 65. Now we got a 70. And she want to go bigger than that. She want to go up to like the 80 or whatever. I'm that like, 80, that 82 inch curve screen. Oh my God. Oh my. <laughs> I, get, I got, I actually got vertigo watching one of those. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, I was at Best Buy and they had the 82 inch curve screen up on the wall and I'm looking at it and I'm like, you just, I don't, I don't, I don't feel so good. I have to go away right now. Yeah, you got a little dizzy thought it was going <laughs> to fall down on you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> It was like, I can't, I can't do that. It was like, no, 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 you get used to it. I was like, I don't want to get used to that feeling. <laughs> yeah, man, it's damn, because we got a projector in here. So, I mean, this well over 100 inches on the wall here, and I'm satisfied with that. But still, that 82 <laughs> is still, yeah. it's still calling me. <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah, man, it's amazing. Um, now that you have two reviews and everything, and we've pretty much uh, told everybody to go give you more reviews. <laughs> yes, um, do it. Tell everybody where they can find you before we go ahead and ride on out of here. Uh, you can find the podcast on iTunes, Podbean, and on Stitcher. Uh, I'm also up on the Google Play Store if you can figure out how to get a podcast down from there. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> um, that's super confusing. I've never been able to do it, but it's up there. So if you know how to do it, um, <laughs> message me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Walker the Geek. And on my Instagram right now, there's just tons and tons of comic blues of stuff. So you can check all that stuff out. All the cosplayers are up there and it was tons of fun. All right. Um, Appreciate you for your time. It's been a pleasure for this hour and 40 minutes getting to know you and whatnot and picking yeah. your brain and whatever. Um, as it is with all guests that come through the show, 
you're welcome to come back anytime for whatever reason to plug things, not your orifices, but you know, and I leave that merch. to my wife. Oh, hey, I'm glad you yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, uh, yeah, no, thank you for having me on. It's been, it's probably been the second longest conversation I've ever had with one person without annoying them in some way. So, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> now I know how you, your wife feel, I guess, huh? <laughs> exactly. I, she usually lasts for about 10, 20 minutes. Yeah. And that was my guest, Walker from Walker the Geek Pod. And um, check him out on Instagram and Twitter, all the places that he plugged in the interview. And uh, it was cool getting to know him. Cool to have him on the show. And I look forward to chatting with him again. Uh, we recorded this a couple of days ago. As I speak, CM Punk just got punched in the face and he's laying on the ground. And um, he's kind of wobbly legged, face all bloody and everything. And he's just swinging haymakers right now. But um, also, uh, Dominion was uh, earlier this morning here on a Saturday. So, um, yeah, a lot of things going on in uh, UFC and the wrestling world. Um, appreciate y'all for coming in and tuning in with me. Make sure uh, you check me out on YouTube. I got some new videos up, and I appreciate some comments or some feedback, some likes, some shares, whatever, however you want to do it. And um, I'm kind of enthralled with the CM Punk fight right now, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. By the time I finish my outro, I bet – I bet you one crisp high five that the match will be over. So we're in the third round right now. They're in the lockup. Here we go. You can find me on Twitter at It's B Rob. That's I T S B R O B. If you want to talk professional wrestling and any other general shenanigans, that's the place you do it. Um, the show has its own Twitter. You can follow it at 3R Show. And if you're hip and trendy, you can follow at 3R Show 2. That's T O O. Um, follow me on Instagram to where I walk the hollowed halls of Walmart. Um, Daddy B Rob is here. My father and my mother is spending the week with me. So I got a video of me and him walking around looking for pajama pants in Walmart on Instagram. So check that out. Um, you can go to randomrobcast.com and find different ways that you can help and support the show. Make it grow and grow and grow and grow. CM Punk is down on the ground. He's getting kind of pummeled. And that's about it. Um, I like hamburgers. I'm trying to stall because I'm done with the outro and see if Punk is not finished yet. I'm not done with you yet. You going to catch these hands. Um, Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm recording this right now. Let me see something. All right. Yeah. I'm actually recording. Um, That's it, y'all. I'm going to see you next time. Hush your face is coming straight to your ears A podcast network that's changing gears Bringing fresh funky pods with a fresh funky beat A family of pods that are bringing the heat There ain't no stopping us Keep coming back to us sick ass pods That'll make you hush www.hushyourface www.hushyourface www.hushyourface.com